longer to live, they kind of develop this list of the things that they want to go do before they die. And for a while there, then, there were lots of Facebook posts, right? Everybody was kind of making their own version of a bucket list. And, and I have to admit, I myself, from time to time, have, have made these kinds of lists. And I've done a few things on them. I've been skydiving, and I've written a children's book, and written a song. I've, I've not, though, attended a protest rally, and I've not lived a year without a calendar or a date book. Boy, I'm still looking forward to that one. I, uh, I have married the, the, my soulmate and, and God's gift of grace to me. I have written a letter to my parents thanking them for all the things that they made me do that I hated at the time and then came to learn and appreciate from later. I've not, however, written my will. I've not planned my funeral or written my obituary. Every month or two, I'd say, I need to do that. I started some notes, but that's all I've done. I began worship by asking you to reflect on your greatest hope for this church, for our church. And I invite you now to, to take that personally and to reflect on what is your greatest hope for your life in this coming year? What is it that you most dream about and want to have happen in this coming year? What is your deepest desire? Would it change if you knew you were going to die? I mean, we all do kind of know that we're going to die. Not maybe this year, but at some point. So, how would your list change if you knew it might be this year? What do you dream of? See, we all have some sort of a vision, some sort of a dream. We have lived into the prophecy of Joel. When Joel wrote, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. Our youth might wish they were dreaming some dreams right now, actually. Some of the youth leaders might have visions of pillows in their immediate future. But we have dreams, and we have visions, and because of the Spirit's presence with us, we have hope as well. But we can become so busy, so distracted by the day-to-day -day living that we don't think about what our aspirations are. We lose focus, and sometimes it takes something like a terminal illness or a movie like The Bucket List to remind us and bring us back to what is it that is essential in our lives. Paul writes to the Colossians in chapter 3, he says, If we were raised with Christ, which we say is what happens in our baptism, that we die with Christ and we are raised with Christ. And if we have been raised with Christ, then look for things that are above where Christ is sitting at God's right hand. And that's really hard for us to focus on. It's hard for us to think about things that are above when we're so steeped in things that are right in front of us. Sometimes things that are below us, beneath us, even things we stub our toe on when we are not looking at things above. We, we want to deny the aging process. We want to deny death altogether. Anti-wrinkle creams and trying to fit into a dress that fit seven years ago. And we want to deny the inevitable. We want to get everything we can get and hold on to it 
just for ourselves because that's what our culture teaches us, that it's all about me, get over it. Anybody got those t-shirts at home or bumper stickers on your car? That's the message that the world gives us and it's not the message that scripture gives us. We are called to set our minds on things above, on heavenly things, on things where Christ is seated at the right hand of God, Christ-like things. Any of those things on your bucket list? Often our bucket lists stay steeped in the here and now, steeped in what's right in front of us, the things we may stub our toe on even, and we forget to add to our bucket list <coughs> the things that are above. It's not about speeding up our aging process or, or running toward the inevitable, but it's about, as Reverend Holmes called it, naming our reality. It's about recognizing who we are, whose we are, remembering that we are not God. So it's not about us. How many of you have uh, some sort of a pre-need arrangement? Maybe you've even already picked out your funeral <coughs> spot, and maybe some of you may have even already paid for your casket. Some of you have done that. Why do we do that? <coughs> what? So that other people won't have to? Any other reasons? Anybody else have a reason that you've made those arrangements? For your own respect. For your own respect. So that you get to make some of those decisions and, okay, good. Yeah, it's one of the ways that we acknowledge and name our reality, right? We get to choose then. We get to choose how we will be respected, how our belongings will be respected. We get to make decisions so that others won't have to. It's part of the legacy that we can leave is to not leave someone with the task of making difficult decisions in the midst of their own grief. It's one of the ways we get to set our minds on things above and think about what is the legacy that we want to leave? <coughs> what are the causes we care about? Who are the people that we want to take care of? Dream dreams about what we will leave. How we may want to be remembered and what we want our brass plaque on. Matthew's Gospel offers us some guidance, both for our personal lives and for our community in terms of our priorities. Matthew writes in the sixth chapter, strive first for the kingdom of God, for God's righteousness. And all these things will be added to you as well. Eugene Peterson's translation puts it this way, steep your life in God reality, God initiative, God provisions. Don't worry about missing out. You'll find all your everyday human concerns will be met. There's one great commandment. All you need is love. Keeping that one ensures that we keep all the others. And that's not nearly as easy as it sounds. You can't do it alone. There's this funny thing about love that requires at least two individuals. It's not something you can do on your own. There is a, an object of that love. And so it is something that we do in community. 
with one another. It's together in community that we help one another stand firm against the it's all about me culture and look toward things that are above. When one of us starts to stare at the ground and starts to stub our toe, it's in community that we can hold one another up and strive first for the kingdom of God. We need one another. Matthew's writer suggests that we don't have to deny our reality. We don't have to get, we don't have to be caught up in the perpetual desire for more and more stuff because we can desire more and more of Christ. All your other concerns will be met if you seek first the kingdom of God. So what's on your bucket list? What is your personal desire for the coming year? What is it that you dream about? And, and do your passions for your own life mesh with your passions and your dream and your vision for this church? In the next couple of weeks, you'll be receiving in the mail an estimate of giving card. I invite you to begin praying about that. Thinking about your own bucket list and your hopes and dreams for the future of this church. I know often we've avoided <coughs> writing things down and yet I encourage you at this stage of our congregational life together it is very important for planning purposes for us to have some idea of what we can expect in the coming year, what your vision is for your own life and for the churches. It's a critical decision that we face, and so it's a critical decision for each one of us in the weeks ahead to make prayerfully. Seek God's direction for how you will express your own spiritual growth, your growth in relationship with Christ, your growth in the ministry of this church. Would you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, we don't know what was on Christ's bucket list, but we know that all he sought was to love you with his whole heart, his whole mind, every ounce of his strength, everything that he had. And we know that all things were added to him, that though he suffered, he rose again, God, to all glory, more provision than we could ever imagine. And so, God, we invite you into our midst, we invite you into our hearts, and we pray that you would work within and through us and lead us to the bucket lists that you would write for our lives. For we offer up to you all of our hopes and all of our dreams. It is in Christ's name and through your Spirit's power that we pray.